Today we're opening the box that I should have never bought. What's up guys, we're back with another video. In today's video, we're opening up a box that I should have never bought. And you guys, if you've watched the every pack opening, which is already out, go check it out. If you have not seen it, it was insane. It's two and a half hours, it's really long. So go enjoy it if you haven't already. But I talked about Speed Duel Tournament Pack 2, and you're like, what is that? What does that even mean? I needed to buy that for the every pack opening, at least I thought I did. So I bought an entire box and uh, we don't actually need this pack because I already had one. So I just have a hundred of these for no reason. So you know what that means. We're gonna open these up. We're also doing a giveaway. I'm gonna give away five of these sealed. All you have to do is like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications, and let me know your favorite card out here. There's actually a lot of valuable cards in here. The most expensive card is over $100. And you might not care about Speed Duel, but you can actually use these cards in uh, regular Yu-Gi-Oh as well. So there's some really nice versions of cards like Ultra Rare, King of the Skull Servants, that's the most expensive card, and some other really cool like rarity upgrades that you can use as well. So let's go ahead and hop into it and start opening these things up because there's a ton of packs. We're gonna pull out our five that's gonna be for the giveaway right off the top so that's six these five will be the giveaway all right let's get to opening there's only like two or three i think maybe three i can't remember if they change it to yeah it's only supers and ultras so yeah it's supers or ultras there's some big value in the ultras especially i don't remember how many you get per box so we're just gonna have to find out we have Enchanted Fitting Room and Man Eater Bug. Very nice. It seems like a bunch of the cards are worth like over a dollar. Like the Man Eater Bug looks like it's like over two dollars. So pretty nice there. The Ultra Rares are where the real money comes in. The Summoner's Art, this is the best super rare. Oh, and there's the King of the Skull Servant. This is literally the best card in the set. It's over one hundred dollars. And you might be like, why is this so expensive? You know, like King of the Skull Servants is not even good in the meta. Well, in Speed Duel, you're allowed to use Speed Duel cards in regular Yu-Gi-Oh, but you're not allowed to use regular Yu-Gi-Oh cards from like the meta and like that don't say Speed duel down here at the bottom you can't use those in speed duel so there's a much more limited meta and i guess skull servants are actually good in that meta so 100 for that ultra rare that's pretty amazing a great start to this opening we've already pulled literally the best card what else are we looking for fortress whale is in here as like an 80 dollar card so that's pretty nice perfectly ultimate great moth for those pequeno moths fans out there very nice we got a beatron so we've already pulled the best cards this is a great start i spent like 440 dollars on this so that 100 dollars is definitely helping in terms of our value let's see if we can get our value back when opening this up all right that is not bad not bad we are gonna we already a good start to making our money back so that's like about a quarter of our dollars we've got uh legendary fisherman nice adhesion trap hole another good card this is gonna be an interesting opening because like you don't really have to go through the packs you just kind of go like two cards two cards two cards you just kind of Fly through him. Ha Hyper Hammerhead. Very nice. The Cabazals. This used to be a good card, I think, at Speed Duel, which is hilarious. It's just a 1700 vanilla, but it was actually pretty good. Um, we have a Legendary Fisherman and Enchanted Fitting Room. I think this is over a dollar as well. I don't think, I don't know if the Fisherman is. Oh, he is. $1.30, it seems like. So, uh, well, at least I'm only looking at the front page. I haven't clicked in to see if it's actually worth $1.30 or less, but. Oh, another Ultra, the perfectly ultimate Gray Moth. Okay, so I think there is there appears to be six ultra rares and this is the third best one So we have now pulled the first and third best ultras out of the set already So this seems to be a really really good box. We are definitely taking this so far We're making a decent amount of our money back, which is nice I'll have justice core destroyer and the half shot now, actually a pretty decent card for glad beasts like in duel links and duel links and speed duel are pretty similar So I assume it's pretty good as well and also they reprinted it. So it's probably pretty decent We've got the man eater bug and the slushy. I love the slushy. So funny all right, we got a slushy. We've got a lot of packs to go. We've already pulled two of the best cards. I'm actually like surprised. I think when we opened Speed Duel Tournament Pack One, we like didn't really pull much. Like we didn't pull. We pulled like Dark Magician only. I think. Uh, ready for intercepting and Adhesion Trap Hole. Another good card. <sighs> yeah, we opened Speed Duel Tournament Pack One box at one point and didn't do that great. Legendary Fisherman, Ally of Justice, Quarter Destroyer, and I thought it was only 50 packs when I opened that one, but this one seems more like 100. I didn't actually count them. It's either 50 or 100. Who knows? I think it's 100 though, based on the box size. Uh, Chained Fitting Room and B. Tron. Okay, Beatron. What's the worst card in here? Ready for intercepting is the cheapest card. And surprisingly, Adhesion Trap Hole is, is really cheap. Summoner's Art, that's really good. And Man Eater Bug. That, yeah, so it looks like those come together because I keep getting those. Very nice because like Summoner's Art's are almost five bucks. So very solid super rare, very solid value to bring back to our opening. Ready for intercepting. That is not solid value because it's the worst in the set. What else can we get? Let me know what you guys think about Speedle. Do you play it? Do you like the cards? Do you collect any of it? Let me know. Adhesion Trap Hole, Half Shut as well. So those are just really good battle traps slash quick play spells. Speed Duel is more of my, uh, my speed, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, this is kind of like the level that I like to play at. Like sort of uh, less complicated. Yeah, I know it's like you might be like, well, that's, you know, that's boring, you know, which you might, if you play like current meta, you probably do think like 
dual links and stuff like that is boring but i just like the level that they play because like it's still like a very complicated and fun game and there's a lot of back and forth which is what i like about it but you know it's not that the level of like current meta Yu-Gi-Oh summoners aren't very cool but i am a big fan of this like level of play i think it's really fun like the three zones i think it's also pretty cool man eater we got legendary fisherman okay so two ultras so far we're gonna see we did pull out five packs we got to keep that in mind those could have ultras in them as well i don't know the exact ratios for these I wonder if it's on the back. 12 super... Okay, it just tells you how many it has. Hyper Hammerhead and Enchanted Fitting Room. It doesn't actually tell you, like, the ratio per pack. It just tells you, like, the set has 12 supers and 6 ultras. Half shut. So we have pulled all the supers already, obviously, because there's only 12 of them, and you get super packs. So we're getting a lot. Cabazals and Ally of Gus's Core Destroyer. We're really just looking for those ultra rares to really, like, make this a nice opening. We have Slushy. We have Hyper Hammerhead. Let's see, we have uh, Summoners Art again, so we're trying to pull as many of those as possible because those are really, really adding to our value. We have a Beatron, oh, and a Maneater, very nice. So, Speed Duel, I was gonna say Summoners Art again. Okay, I don't know why, Maneater and Summoners Art. Maybe that's why I sensed it. The Summoners Art, the Maneater, very nice. A lot of packs. We didn't even mean to like get these, but we had to get them for every pack. It turns out we didn't. Now we're opening them up. And actually, I'd say it's going pretty well. Well, that's, uh, you know, King of Skull Servants. That's pretty good. Unless that's all the Ultras. Then it'd be like, well, I mean, it's so good because like even if it is all the Ultras, we pulled one and three. So if we pulled one and two is the only way it could be better. Or maybe like if we pull two King of Skull Servants, I don't know if you could even do that. But I assume at some point it could happen. Summoner's Art, again, very nice. If we pull like, you know, 20 of those, we'd be happy. You know, that'd be a lot of money in Summoner's Art. We'll take it. We have the ready for intercepting. I remember last time I actually sold, uh, when I did Speed Little Tournament Pack 1, I sold a bunch of them on TCG Player, the cards that I didn't like use, and somebody like negged me because, or like gave me a negative feedback because, that, oh, Serpent Knight Dragon, let's go. I don't think this one's that great. Let's see. Fourth, so one, three, and four. So we have now pulled Serpent Knight Dragon as well. So all we need really, we need the Fortress Whale, and then we'll be at the top. So we got one, three, and four already. These probably get back almost $200 for those out of our 440. This value isn't that bad, actually. Like, we're actually pulling pretty well. Um, as I was saying, somebody, like, uh, left me negative feedback because the cards were a little warped. And I was just like, well, they, uh, I mean, they just come like this. Like, these are, like, notorious for being warped. So, unfortunately, I had to, like, you know, refund them and everything, which was not really that big of a deal. It's better than, like, a negative feedback. But, yeah, that was a bummer. So, yeah, I was like, uh, okay, yeah, he didn't like it. The worst part is when you get a negative feedback and they don't, like, send you a message, like, ahead of time. You just get that email from T you player that says you have received negative feedback and it's like oh from who like i didn't know about this so yeah that, those are always the worst to see and then you got to like deal with them or whatever but usually if somebody sends me a message they're upset with it i'll just refund them in general it's like okay yeah you're that you're probably not lying to me and if you are like if it feels like they're lying to me i just block them and then they can't buy from me again you don't have to really worry about it but uh, usually, uh, I think people are being legit, like if they didn't get their package or whatever. Usually it doesn't happen too much, which is really nice. Because I think for the most part, people are scared to sell on TCG Player and stuff and eBay. But I think for the most part, most buyers are like legit. But there are a few bad apples that can really mess it up for everybody, unfortunately, sometimes. But I think for the most part, we're, we're pretty good on TCG Player. Most of you guys that buy from me are, especially you guys are watching, like, you guys are awesome because you usually like, oh, Ruxin, love to buy from him. And then if you have a problem, then you can just send me a message and then I will, of course, deal with it. All right, we got, oh, the Fortress Whale. Let's go, dude. Four Ultras. Are we going to hit all of them? Right now, we have the top four Ultras. So we're at like 180, uh, 230 something. And then we're probably like around like 275 in terms of value from the Ultras. So honestly, Good chance we get our money back out of our 440. If we can pull like another like two ultras and they're both good, ready for intercepting, I think we'd be pretty close in terms of value. That's not bad. We will take that all day. Slushy, legendary fisherman. You, not every day you open some Yu-Gi-Oh packs and get your money back. It does not happen that often. Summoner's Art, there's another one that is definitely going to help toward that goal. Not every day. And then, of course, you have to take into account like, well, I like to do like see if we get our money back. But then if you actually sell them and you do it on TCG Player, you lose about 13%. So that can really kill, like, trying to make your money back. But unless you get two Fortress Whales. Let's go. Second best Ultra Rare. We just got two of them. We are insane right now. Oh, my goodness. Uh, how many Ultras do you get per box in this? We are very close to our money back. Because now we're, like, 260 or, like, over $300 in Ultra Rares. That is insane. Wow. Let's go. Cabazals. We got Hyper Hammerhead. Oh, my goodness. Talk about some awesome pulls. I wonder why the Fortress Whale... I bet the Fortress Whale is expensive just because there's, like no printings of it i'm assuming because even like tp7 super is like insanely expensive so like this ultra is probably expensive because of that i assume because like 
There's no way Fortress Whale is a good card. You know, it's just a regular ritual. There's definitely better options. I would assume that's for collectability. Summoner's Art, again, very good. That's five Ultras. This is crazy. And plus, we have five other packs we did not open. So who knows? There could be more in there as well. So if you guys went in and pulled something, make sure to let me know. Because I would want to know how many total Ultras were in this box. Oh, my goodness. What a crazy opening. Uh, okay, Hyper Hammerhead. Cool. We've got ourselves a... Kabazal is ready for intercepting. Cool. We have a man eater bug and a slushy. Will we get another ultra? I'm liking it. I'm loving it. Let's see. We got the adhesion drop hole. That was not good. Those are the worst two cards. Those two trap cards in terms of value, even though they're both pretty decent cards, actually. Uh, I'll have Justice Core Destroyer. We still have a lot of packs left. Like this, this was definitely 100 packs. This was not 50. This was definitely 100 packs. We got Enchanted Fitting Room and Kabazals again. Okay, where's our Summoner's Arts at? What was the second best card again? Maneater Bug. We pulled a bunch of those. Summoner's Art again. Okay, we are getting a lot of those. Just very good. Very, very good. We will take that. Maneater as well. And then the Hammerhead. Cool. Come on, Ultras. Give us one more King of the Skull Servants. Let's do it. This would be insane. We've got the Half Shut. Pretty decent as well. we got two packs there. That's not going to work. What will we pull? We have the Legendary Fisherman. Okay. Man, two King of the Skull Servants. This is like the best box you could possibly get. Like, it's insane. I'll have Justice Core Destroyer. I mean, we also got the Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, which is, you know, the Descendant, or not the Descendant, that's the opposite, the Ancestor of the Pecania Moth, I should say. There's the uh, Legendary Fisherman. So, I mean, how can you go wrong with the Ancestor of Pecania Moth? I mean, if you have Pecania Moth in your bloodline, very, very powerful, very, very strong. Chanted Fitting Room. Okay, so did we pull all the Ultras at the beginning? That's the question. I don't know. Maybe we did, maybe we didn't. I didn't really mix them up, but also, like, they kind of fell into a different order, if you know what I mean. Like, I pulled them out of the box, and, like, they didn't go exactly in the same order, but I didn't, like, bother shuffling them. So, I don't know. Maybe they all are all at the beginning. Who knows? I'm a, Maybe we get, like, six Ultras or something like that? Because, like, well, you get five Ultimates in, like, a regular OTS box, so maybe you only get five Ultras. I don't know. We're going to have to find out. Uh, at least 95 of the packs. We won't know for those other five unless somebody tells me when they get them in the giveaway. We have the... Oh, Amazon is Swordswoman, which is actually one of the cheaper ultras, surprisingly. This is the fifth best. The worst is Barrel Dragon. I'm surprised this is so bad because this card was really like annoying in Duel Links and actually pretty good. We now have six ultra rares. This seems pretty strong. The only one we have not pulled is Barrel Dragon, which is... Uh, Okay, because that one is only worth $21. The Amazon of Swords one is about $38, which is still pretty decent. It's pretty close to the Serpent Knight Dragon, which is $44. Which, I don't know why the Serpent Knight Dragon is worth so much, to be honest. Because, like, why is Serpent Knight Dragon worth anything at all? Because, like, I don't know. It's like there's already a secret rare and original print. And then you're obviously not playing Serpent Knight Dragon, are you? Like, how would you play a Serpent? Is there some sort of deck that, like has cards specifically for Serpent Knight Dragon. I've never heard of those cards if there are. I don't really understand that price point. I don't know. I guess it's just because it's an ultra and like out of a, like a tournament pack kind of thing. Maybe. I really don't know. It seems a little bit weird to me, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments. If you guys know about Speed Duel, you know why it's expensive. Is it just because of the uh, collectability of like being a Speed Duel Ultra? That doesn't seem like enough though to me. Like some ulties from like OTS are less than $44. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that would purely be enough. And like, is Serpent Knight Dragon a popular enough card? Like, I'm a big fan of Serpent Knight from Magic Ruler. I don't know if I would necessarily want to pay $44 for... Okay. <laughs> Man, I, I wasn't even like trashing it. I was just wondering. And then we pull another one. So now we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We, we're like going to make our money back. This is insane. 160. We've got... 310 we've got those are 90 that's 400 that's 438 i mean the, the ultras have almost made our money back this is insane we're actually gonna make money on a on a video <laughs> this is awesome i love it i love it let's go and we didn't even open five of the packs maybe buying this uh 440 dollars box was actually a blessing in disguise like i was like oh man i didn't need to buy that but I guess it was worth it. I don't know. I guess it was worth it. Uh, man eater bug, cool. Because I think the guy had it listed at 500 or something, and I offered him 400, and he just took it. So maybe like I don't know, at 500 we still would be doing pretty good. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Yeah, it was on eBay by the way where I got it. <sighs> wow, what a crazy opening summoners art with all those summoners arts too. I mean, it's like a nice. I don't know how in demand speed duel cards are though. Well, maybe we'll put them up and nobody buys them. That's that might be a problem too. And also, I'm using, like, the outside, like, TCG player price guide without clicking in. Because you usually want to click on the name and, like, see the lowest listing and everything to see the actual value. So, maybe some of these values are off and, like, the estimates are not good enough. Summoner's Art and Man Eater are very good. We're down to, like, the last 10, I would say. Been a pretty great opening, though. Pretty great, I would say. Legendary Fisherman, half shut. Wow, what a 
opening, man. What an opening, I should say. Cabazals. Are we gonna... So, how many Ultras? Seven or something? Are we gonna get another one? I'm down for it. Maybe if it was like 1 in 12. I mean, that seems like we would get 8 then. If it was 1 in 12, that would actually make sense. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. I don't remember. But I don't remember uh, Speed Duel Tournament Pack 1. We definitely didn't pull this many Ultras. If you guys remember. Didn't we pull like 3 total? It was like 3 out of 50 packs or something. I think it was 50. Yeah, that would still be under ratio because that would be like six total. We pulled seven already. We got and we haven't even opened, you know, ten packs. We got seven or six here, and then five more that we're not opening. So interesting. I don't really know what to think about this opening. I mean I'm happy about it, but I don't know like about the ratios. I'm still more confused than ever about what the ratios are. I was expecting like three ultras in this whole opening, and we got seven. So I guess that's good. I guess that's good. We will take it. We've got uh, ready for intercepting half shut. Can we get one more in the last four? That would be insane. Let's get a King of the Skull Servants. I like how we started off with that, like the very best one, and then pulled six more other ones that were not it. So it was like, oh, well, this isn't that hard. And then it actually was. Chanted Fitting Room, three packs to go. These are also really annoying to open. Like, they just rip really weird. Uh, Cabazal's cool. Two packs to go. Can we pull something nice? Can we pull something epic? We got Hyper Hammerhead and Enchanted Fitting Room. And the final chance for another Ultra Rare. Well... Final chance for us, at least, except if you're the giveaway winner. Then you have five more chances to pull something big. You can get the eighth ultra. We have Maneater Bug and Half Shut. Okay. Wow, that was a pretty sick opening. I think we made our money back, which is awesome. Let me know what you thought about the opening. Do you like opening Speed Duel tournament packs, Speed Duel in general, or do you play Speed Duel at your locals? And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more epic content, and don't forget to go check out the every pack opening last week. It's pretty amazing. Shout out to Choice333, Nightshade Gaming YT, Hayden Jameson, Squirtle, Hoppus, Flexi Boy, Dizzy, Ernesto Deanda, Puffins of Doom, TCG Trusted Cards, JT Cho, Tomato Juice, Daxter, Tone Fo Show, and then High Show, Christopher Ward, Ian Musa, John Nolan, Junior Barding, Mike Nance, Mimic Gecko, Seth Fisher, Stanley, Thomas McLean, and Tone Z. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.